Today's video is going to be all about ionic bonding and starting things off with the basics. So to start off the basics of ionic bonding, you need to know what ions are. Think of the word, ionic, the nature of being ions, okay? So ions are simply atoms that have gained extra electrons or they've lost some of their electrons and resulting in that atom becoming charged. They can have a resulting positive charge or they can have a resulting negative charge. So let's look at an example. In this case here, I've got the element lithium, and here's an atom of lithium. It's got an atomic number, the small number on the top of the plate here, that is the atomic number. It tells you how many protons your atom has. So if, if its atomic number is three, I have drawn here three in the nucleus. There are also about four uh, neutrons in there. However, I'm just gonna keep it simple and just have the protons only uh, illustrated here in the center of the atom keeping things simple as possible. On the outside, I have three electrons. The reason being is that all elements on the periodic table are neutrally charged when they are in their elemental state. So if I've got elemental lithium, it must have a neutral charge. Three positives, therefore, I need to have three negatives from the electrons. Now, the rule when it comes to ions is that every atom wants a complete outer shell of electrons. A complete outer shell of the electrons. Sometimes this is called the octet rule. Uh, however, this one is a little bit more general because some atoms, they don't have access to eight. Lithium is one of those exceptions. So let's talk about lithium. It wants a complete outer shell of electrons. How can it achieve this? Well, the inside shell can only hold a maximum of two electrons. The second shell can have a maximum of eight, hence the octet rule. However, lithium only has one in this outermost shell. That means it needs to find another seven. That is very difficult to do. It's much easier for lithium to simply lose this extra electron and thus exposing the full shell lying underneath then it'll be a lot more stable, much more preferable. It will have achieved it, its purpose in life to become the most stable atom it can be. So, as it gives away its outermost electron, resulting in that electron shell disappearing, and now the inside has become exposed and that is completely full. But let's look at the balance of charges now. How many protons do I have? Let's count them. One, two, three. Three protons, and each of them are positively charged. Let's look at how many electrons I have. I've got one, two. So I've got two negative charges. If I do some simple maths, I get a result of one positive charge overall for this atom. This means that the atom has become positively charged. Positive one. Now, before I go further, there is this thing about chemists and chemistry. We are very lazy. If we can find a way to write less stuff down, we will do so. And one of the ways we can reduce the number of things we have to write down is that every time we see the number one, we don't write it down. We imagine it's there, but we don't write it down on paper. So you could say that it's just simply positive. We imagine that there's a number one there. Are we good so far? Good. Let's carry on. So this thing here has now become charged. This is now known as an ion because it's now got a charge. This is now a lithium ion. Now there are other cases where you can get negative ions. But in this case, this one is positive, and we give that a special name to, to describe all positive ions. And these are called cations. Meow. I'm a cat person. I find cats are really, really fun to be with. Kittens are cute. I find it's a very positive feeling to have a cat in the room. Positive cations. Positive cations. So I'm going to write brackets here. It is a cation. Please make sure that you pronounce this name correctly. 
It's not cation, it's cation. You should always remember that the last bit should say iron, the rest should work out just fine. Let's look at, look at another example where an atom gains electrons. So, I will revisit my atom here. Let us pick a different element. I will pick, let's see, I will pick fluorine. So, elemental fluorine, it's got an atomic number. I'm looking at the periodic table across the room. It's got an atomic number of nine. And I think it's got some atomic weight of, I have to look at it, one second. 19, that's a heavy atom for its size. Okay, atomic number of nine, therefore how many protons must it have? Nine, so I've got to fix my atom here and make room for more. So I've got three so far, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that'll do. Now, when I draw my electron shells, I must have nine electrons. Let's draw the first one. One, two. It's full. I have to go to another shell if I need to fill out the rest of the remaining seven, seven electrons. So, next shell, then next shell we go. I'm going to go around the outside. One, two, actually it's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, I'm starting to double them up now. Eight, nine. Let's examine the rule. Is it happy? Is it stable? Every atom wants a complete outer shell of electrons. How many does the first shell hold? A maximum of two, it's full. The second shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in its outer shell. It just needs one more electron. It would love to get one more. So what can it do? It can steal it from somebody who doesn't like electrons very much. Somebody who's giving away practically for free. Somebody a lot like lithium. Lithium gave away its electron, so I could draw lithium next door. So I'll just quickly draw an abbreviation. So here's my lithium nucleus here. Uh, and on the outside, it has its electrons. So one, two, and its outermost electron. It can give it away. To fluorine, so it can go all the way over here and fill the gap. So, consequently, this electron disappears once it's given its electron away, and th then it appears over here. Now, if you remember, after this process, lithium becomes positively charged, positive one, and we try to be lazy as possible and just imagine that the one is there, positive. Let's look at fluorine now. How many protons do I have? Well, uh, it's got uh, nine protons, nine positives, and I have how many electrons now? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten electrons. There's ten. It's more than usual. If I do my maths, nine take away ten, I get a negative one answer. Therefore, the fluorine atom has become negatively charged, negative one. But remember, we are lazy chemists and we don't write the number one very often, if at all. So we've got a negative ion and a positive ion. And now something interesting happens. Positives and negatives attract like no tomorrow. They stick together like a guy and a girl. You put a hand in each hand and they're holding hands and they become boyfriend and girlfriend. They love it. Positives and negatives, they love each other. They are oppositely charged and they will stick together as best as they can, close as they can. If they are the same charge, if this was positive and this was also positive, then that's not going to really work out for them and they're going to repel each other and go as far away from each other as they possibly can. But in this case, we've got the opposites and so they will stick. Now, as I mentioned before, lithium here is known as a cation because it's very positive. Yeah. What about negatives? Well, I tend to think these things are a lot like onions. Onions make me cry. That's a very negative thing for me. So it has a name called anion, which sounds a little bit like onions. Well, at least it looks like it to me. Maybe it's different for you. Anion. This is a word to describe all kinds of negatively charged ions. But when you put these two together, the 
resulting name changes a little bit. If you remember, lithium just goes from lithium atom and it becomes lithium ion. Fluorine, however, if I write the name, fluorine, when it becomes an ion in this case, in this situation, its name also changes. Instead of being fluorine, it becomes fluoride. The last couple of letters disappear and they change for something better, which is fluoride. Every time you see IDE on the end of a name in chemistry, you think to yourself, okay, this thing is an ion, it's got a charge. And it's probably, most likely, an anion, and one of the species which is negatively charged. So if I write the whole compound, if I combine these two together to create a new substance, it would be called lithium fluoride. Right. That's all for today. for today in this video. I hoped it got you through some of the basics of ionic bonding. Just remember, ions are ones that have gained electrons or lost electrons and resulting in some kind of charge. They become an anion or a cation, uh, and the anion, the one that's negative charge, its name changes a little bit. And the next video, which I will go into, will go through a couple of practice problems where you get to see this happening for a, different, a number of different examples. And also how to tell from the formula, you know, like H2O or CO2, how can you tell if the formula is an ionic compound? All right, check it out in the following video. See you later.